Vibro TV, making positive connections in the chronic illness community. Hello, fellow chronic illness warriors. Monday May Day here. Are you ready to have some fun? Now remember, Fibro TV's podcasts are for entertainment purposes and educational purposes only. So if a positive attitude, fruits and veggies causes you to grow a third eye or feathers, don't blame Jen. She warned you. Now let's get the fun started. Ha ha! You're listening to the Daily Dose of Health and Wellness with Jen Reynolds. Fibro TV, making positive connections in the chronic illness community. My body hurts. The information contained on FibroTV.com is meant for information and entertainment purposes only. Any information via audio, video, or print material should in no way replace any advice or direction given to you from your personal physician or medical caregiver. Please consult your physician for specific treatment options. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Jen Reynolds, creator and founder of FibroTV.com. On today's Daily Dose of Health and Wellness, episode number 10, we're going to be talking about services for those on SSI, SSDI, and low-income families in the United States. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the podcast. As if somebody being diagnosed with a chronic illness was not enough, we also have to deal with financial struggles. Many people with chronic illness either need to reduce their hours at work or actually quit their job and their career and go on SSI or SSDI, if you're lucky enough to get it. Some people don't realize If you're limited income or you're on SSDI or SSI, there are resources that you can utilize to help you make ends meet. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. Now, granted, it's only going to be in the United States that I'm talking about today because every single country is different. Even each state can be different. But I'll try to go over as many things that I know of to help you guys out. If and when you get approved for SSI or SSDI, you're automatically given a social worker. Not everybody utilizes the social workers, but I think they're a great tool in order to help you find different services available to you. If you do not know who your social worker is, you can call up your county social services office and they will let you know. So let's go over the basics, the bare necessities that we need. We need food and we need housing. And those two things do have some services available to those that are either low income or on SSI or SSDI. Let's first talk about food. There is a program called SNAP. SNAP, or the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, is a program formerly known as food stamps. It is a federal nutrition program that helps you stretch your food budget and buy healthy food. SNAP benefits can be used to purchase food at grocery stores, convenience stores, some farmers markets, and some co-op food programs. You can also buy any type of seeds or plants that produce food with your SNAP benefits. The only food that cannot be purchased is fast food or hot food. So if you go to the grocery store and you see one of those chickens that are like roasted and they're hot, you cannot purchase anything that's considered fast food with your SNAP card. And obviously you cannot purchase alcoholic beverages or cigarettes with your SNAP card. Eligibility varies from state to state. Most states go by your income, the amount of rent you pay, and the amount of bills you pay. And each state gives you a certain amount of money, up to $200 a month for 
per person for food benefits. To apply for benefits or for information about the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, you can contact your local SNAP office or you can apply online. If your income is too high for SNAP benefits or you do not meet the requirements, you can also go to local food banks or churches. Many churches have pantries that you can go to and they have um, nutritious food there for you and there's food banks all over this country that will be happy to assist you for um, usually free and sometimes they ask for a small fee or ask for a donation whatever you can you know afford to do at that time also when we're struggling to feed ourselves and we have pets we also struggle to feed our pets and you cannot get any type of pet food with your snap card but there are services in your area almost in every area that do have free dog and cat food and, and treats for your dog and your cat so that you don't have to separate with your furry friend during a time of financial struggle. And you can do that by just contacting your local animal shelter and asking them if there's any programs in the area that will bring you free cat and dog food. Now let's talk a little bit about what costs us the most out of everything and that is our shelter or housing. And there are several programs available to those in the United States, and um, most of them do vary from county to state to city. They're all different. But there's one program that is government funded called the Housing Choice Voucher Program, or it's called Section 8. Some people call it Section 8. So the Housing Choice Voucher Program is the federal government's largest major program for assisting very low income families and the elderly and disabled so that they can afford you know safe and sanitary housing in a private market since the assistance is provided on behalf of the family or individual participants are able to find their own housing and this includes single family homes townhouses and apartments now i couldn't find any specific information about how much you have to pay rent wise but I talked to a few people today that are on the section 8 program and they say they have to pay 30% of whatever their income is so if you got a thousand dollars a month you would pay three hundred dollars rent a month wherever you're living and there's a little downfall with the section 8 program there's usually a waiting list and there's usually a waiting list to get on the waiting list the waiting list to get on the waiting list is usually about two years depends where you live and it opens up it'll they announce it like in your city in the newspaper they'll announce it you know on the internet and it's usually open for a couple days and it fills right up it is so quick and you really got to be on top of it and once you're on that list if you're on disability you get put more on the top than other people but it's still usually at least two years up to seven to eight years waiting for that. Because the waiting list is so long, you're gonna have to look into other options um, if you cannot afford an apartment on your own or a house on your own or whatever you need to do for you and your family. And there are a couple other options that have opened up recently in the last few years. And one of them is, um, they have senior living apartments and usually their rent is cheaper because it's for senior citizens and their income is usually lower and they're really, really nice apartments and they're usually very secure. Um, they've actually opened up these senior citizen apartments for people that are on disability and they're eligible to, to live in these apartment complexes. And usually the rent's about 20% under the market, so you can save a little bit of money that way. A lot of people also um, do a roommate type of situation or live with their family for a while until they can get their housing adjusted. Or there's even certain apartment complexes that are just for people that are low income. And in order to find that out, you would probably have to call your local housing department or HUD department and find out which apartment complexes in, in your area are for low income. Now let's talk about utilities because that's another big cost that we have. And um, most 
utility departments or utility companies have some kind of discount program for those that are low income or on SSI or SSDI. Um, electric companies, they usually have a, a, about 15 to $20 off if you are low income. The gas company has, you know, discount programs and the phone company has discount programs as well. And it's usually just for local calls, but it's like $10 a month or something like that. It might have gone up since I was on it a while back, but you might want to check that out. Also, if you cannot afford a cell phone and if you're on SSI, SSDI, food stamps, or Medicaid, there is a cell phone that is absolutely free called SafeLink. And you can go to safelinkwireless.com and see if it's available in your area. You just enter your zip code and you get a free phone. It's just a very basic phone. It's nothing fancy. And you get 250 free minutes each month. Um, you pay nothing for the shipping. They send it right to your door and you activate it. And they also have like a really cheap program if you want to buy extra minutes that you would not be able to get at any cell phone company. So another thing you might want to look into. If you're in an emergency and your electricity or your gas is going to be shut off and you can just cannot afford it, there are programs in your city in your county that do do emergency one time a year payments for you and it's usually done by the Salvation Army but sometimes it's done by local churches as well you just have to look up online just you know type in Google search emergency utilities being paid or I, I don't know exactly what you have to put in there but usually um, the Salvation Army will do it once a year they'll also do it if you're moving to a cheaper place or to another place and you can't afford the deposit. They'll also do it for rent one time. So um, that's only for an emergency. They will not do it more than once a year, but it's a good tool to have if you're like going through the winter months and your bill is extremely high or if you live in the desert and your electricity is high from the air condition, they will do it that one time of year for you. And you have to have a shut off notice or an eviction notice from your landlord. Next, we're going to briefly touch on the topic of medical. Um, there's just so much information about it that there's no way that I can go through it all. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit about medical. Now, if you are on SSI or SSDI, you do qualify for something called Medicare after some kind of waiting period. And I think it's a year. It might be a little less. It might be a little bit more. Um, and then you qualify for Medicare. It is not free. They take out about a hundred and something dollars a month every single month. And um, if you cannot afford that hundred and whatever dollars a month, there are programs that can actually help you pay for that. And that's by the state. Um, there's either Medicaid and, or there's, there's also some kind of help just for Medicare patients that just covers, you know, the deductible and some of the other things that you cannot afford. For more information on that, you can go to medicare.gov and they actually have a whole questionnaire where they ask you a bunch of questions and they tell you, you know, different programs that you can qualify for. I think they even include food stamps in this. Um, they they include Medicare, um, help with your utilities. So it's interesting to go on there and just to kind of go through that so you can actually see what programs that you might qualify for. And then they'll give you the information to contact, who to contact in order to get involved in those programs. So again, the link for that is medicare.gov and I highly recommend anybody that is on Medicare to go over there and just fill out the little survey questionnaire and see what programs you might qualify for. Now the difference between Medicaid and Medicare is Medicare is a government program for those that are disabled or senior citizens where Medicaid is a state program and Medicaid serves low income parents, children, seniors, and people with disabilities. There are different types of coverage for people with different needs. Income and resource limits for each of these groups vary. Age, blind and disabled, infants, children, and families, long-term care, and Medicare recipients. 
To be eligible for Medicaid, you must also be a U.S. citizen or provide proof of eligible immigration status. Individuals only applying for emergency services are not required to provide documentation of immigration status. Usually that means pregnancy. Live in North Carolina or provide proof of residency. Have a social security number or have applied for one. There's also programs that are by each county and not all of them have them, but you might want to check it out if you're not eligible for Medicare or Medicaid. And um, when I lived in Orange County, California, it was called MSI or Medical Service Initiative. And um, when I was working, but I didn't have enough money to pay for insurance and I was sick, I had to pay like a certain amount and the state paid for the rest. And there's a lot of paperwork involved. So, and um, also if you're, you don't qualify for that, there's always clinics. There's free clinics in almost every state. Usually you need to make an appointment and it's a little bit of a wait because everybody's using them because everybody's out of work right now. But um, you can also contact your local social services department and find out where your local clinics are. Oh, and I forgot to mention when we were talking about food that there's many stores and one of them is Walmart that does price comparisons. So if you're going through your ads during the week and you see several things that are really cheap and you know you want to get the cheapest price for everything without having to drive everywhere to go get it and waste gas money because sometimes that just costs more money than actually getting the product cheaper, you can actually bring in ads and they will do a price comparison. You can do this with fruits, vegetables, meats. Um, the only thing that they will not do is buy one, get one free. But anything like by the pound or or even, um, you know, processed foods, which I hope you guys are staying away from if you have a chronic illness, but anything that is in the paper, if they have it cheaper in the paper, Walmart will do a price comparison and there's several other stores that will also do that for you. My body hurts. Well, that concludes this week's Daily Dose of Health and Wellness. We hope you enjoyed the show and learned a little something today. You can find us over at Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Fibro TV, at Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash Fibro TV, at YouTube at YouTube.com forward slash Fibro TV. And we're also on Google Plus and iTunes as well. The Daily Dose of Health and Wellness is directed and produced by moi, Jen Reynolds, and is published every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at FibroTV.com. I want to take this time to thank you for listening. Until next time. And my stomach hurts. My mommy is sick, but she's the best mommy in the entire world. And I just want her to get better. Fibro TV, making positive connections in the chronic illness community. You can find us over at www.fibrotv.com.